Let's. And uh, we start with Aston Martin. Because the company must have had a meeting recently, the bosses must have said it's going to be a few years now until the next Bond film is out. So what are we going to do at Aston Martin to generate some headlines in the meantime? And what they must have decided is to make a car that is as good as a car can be. Yeah, now they weren't talking about making a racing car, because in racing there are rules about how big the engine can be and what sort of tyres you can use. Yep, and they weren't talking about making a road car, because then it would have to meet uh, emissions regulations, it would have to have comfy rubber bits in the suspension, and all that stuff would just slow it down. Yes, exactly. They wanted to make a car that adhered to no rules and no regulations. So they have. This is what they came up with. It costs £1.8 million. Pounds, and it's called the Vulcan. Spectacular, isn't it? But not very practical. Totally stuck. Oh yeah. You you will be able to edit this out, won't you? I don't want people thinking I'm fat. Right, I'm going to pop it into gear now. You may hear this a little bit. Good. First, uh, foot on clutch. And now it's time to fire up the 7-litre V12. Put your foot down. I'm not going to say that it's like being attacked by a bear because it isn't. But it is like being in a room with a bear that's thinking of attacking you. And at the moment, I've turned the engine down on this knob here to its minimum setting. It's only producing 500 horsepower. It's not a very well-equipped car either. The windows don't wind down, for instance. There are no toys at all. And you only get half a steering wheel. However, there is 
One amazing thing you get for your £1.8 million. Pounds. An all-expenses-paid trip to a racetrack of your choice, where an Aston Martin test driver will teach you how to drive your car not with the engine wound down to 500 horsepower, but with it turned up to the max. The thing you get for your money is a squadron of mechanics. But sadly, not a handbrake. Right, what I've done now is I've taken, yes, taken the steering wheel off so I can't put it in gear to stop it rolling away. Oh, God. Arg! 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 When I'd finally got it to stop, the jacks were deployed and the mechanics set to work. That's the thing about the Vulcan. Wing angle, roll bar, suspension, brakes. Everything can be adjusted to suit your personal taste. After ten minutes of pretending I knew what they were doing, I was back on the track. <laughs> just as bonkers as it had done before. However, I've changed. I've been driving this thing now, I don't know, three or four hours, and I'm starting to understand it. I'm starting to get used to it. I'm starting to trust it. Now I'm starting to understand why the Vulcan could go around the Nardo handling circuit in southern Italy. Nine seconds faster than the McLaren P1. Nine seconds in car time. That's a year. You get phenomenal mechanical grip in the low speed corners, and then on the isn't straight, you've got a ton and a half of downforce thanks to its aerodynamics. Most of all, is that it's not a test bed. It's not an example of what cars will be like in the future. It's a celebration of what they were like in the past. What it is, is old time rock and roll. quite like the car. Oh, it's unbelievable, that thing. And what I love most of all is they've made it out of bits that they already had lying around in the factory. It'd be like you going home after your trip to South Africa, opening up the fridge and using what's there to make a delicious shepherd's pie. What, some stale milk and an old piece yes, of cheese? Yes, exactly. You could <laughs> it. And it, it costs, what is it, £1.8 million? Pounds. Yes. How much is that, Jeremy, in Rand? £1030 million and a million. Is it? <laughs> But for that, it does 0 to 60 in, what, 2.9 seconds? Mm -hmm. So it's nearly as fast as an Aventador or a Caterham R600 or an Aerial Atom V8, but much more expensive <laughs> and not road legal. Yes, thank you very much for relieving yourself all over my enthusiasm. You're welcome. <laughs> it is 
a brilliant, brilliant car. And only one question now remains. How fast will it go round our track in the hands of a man who thinks that everything British is basically communist? <laughs> Here he is, looking a bit confused. All right, folks, let's see what this bag of bolts will do. And he's off, and immediately on to the isn't straight. First corner coming up, and he's flat through there. That is ballsy. Changing down there for the second corner on the isn't straight, but now he can use full power. 800 brake horsepower? Are you kidding me? Now, hard on the brakes for your name here. He has got to be impressed with this. For about $50,000, I can get one of my old trucks, NASCAR style. It's got 800 brake horsepower. Deer hunting, got a room for a couple deer in the back. I don't think you can put no deer in this thing. Plenty of deer to run over, though, back on the isn't straight. James Bond drives one of these. Shit. Vin Diesel with his ass. Yes, I'm sure he would, but down into first. I don't know about this thing. Like a red-headed stepchild, I'm talking. Be damn ugly. I'm sure he's fully concentrating past old lady's house. He is flat out towards substation. It is bumpy here. And there's new tarmac on the apex. Will it kick the tail out? Yes, it does a bit. He's OK. Into field of sheep, no sheep today, and there he is across the line. Hell of a track, man. It's a hell of a track. Big car. Anyway, we must now uh, bring up the lap board and find out how fast the American got round in the Vulcan. Let's have a look. Ooh, it's quick. Oh, hello. Curve hello. <laughs> Yeah, there you go, you see, old-time rock and roll. Old-time rock and roll has beaten rap and techno and R and B and is now at the top. Very good, yeah, yes. There well, you go. Well done and thank you. And now...